What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. It's going to be fairly active, I think, over the next 48 hours as we get close to the trade deadline. We have one of the most aggressive GMs in the league, Mortensen, the Mort Report, who's one of the more consistently reliable uh, insiders uh, for ESPN, said the Philadelphia Eagles are expecting to make some fun plays here as the trade deadline comes in. My gut was thinking it's Robbie Anderson. Yo, Temple Tough, I've been on the Robbie Anderson hype train, had him mocked to the Philadelphia Eagles as a priority undrafted free agent in 2016. It made sense. I watched him a lot at Temple. He's a deep threat. He's from Philly or the Philly Jersey area. It made, it made too much sense. And then when he went undrafted, I was like, perfect. I'm going to get this one right. Much like I got Trey Burton right a couple years, a year or two before. And they just didn't have any interest bringing him in, went to the Jets, became one of the better deep threats in the National Football League. Even though he's yet to go over 1,000 yards, you have to really have a breakout season Take don't lie. He is a really, really good deep threat, really good yards per catch. Would be a perfect fit for the Philadelphia Eagles. The Jets are shipping him. I think that's what's going to happen. But then out of nowhere, this Darius Slay stuff came out. I had people in my Discord tagging me that, like, this guy out of Vegas who was right with, like, Kawhi Leonard, right with, like, a bunch of insider information over the last two years, thinks that Philadelphia is going to get this trade done. Uh, with the Detroit Lions. I think he has like an inside with Darius Slay's agent who really thinks it could happen. You know, I'm not going to put way too much stock into it. In my opinion, though, Darius Slay, I mean, I'm, I'm listing my top three corners in the NFL. And I've, I've been fairly consistent with my top three corners in the NFL. It's been Jalen Ramsey, some, Darius Slay, and someone. Not necessarily always one, two, three, but it's Darius Slay, in my opinion right now, Jalen Ramsey's best corner. Stephon Gilmore, number two, even though Gilmore's having an outstanding year this year. If we're going just on this season, you probably have Gilmore at one. But in terms of talent, I'm going Ramsey at one, Gilmore at two, Darius Slay at three. I thought Darius Slay's 2017 for the Detroit Lions was one of the most insane seasons I've ever seen from a corner. He was my number one corner in the NFL in 2017. 2018 was still pretty damn good. And now in 2019, I mean... We got a pick, got a couple of passes, a little bit of a down year, but I mean, Detroit's not playing really well defensively. Then they ended up shipping out uh, Diggs, that's really kind of ripped the locker, who was a captain. They traded him for like day three picks to the Seattle Seahawks. A lot of Detroit Lions fans were very upset. Darius Slay, very upset. And now it appears that the Lions might want to move on from him. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what the cost is going to be. I think it's going to be fairly expensive. Not Jalen Ramsey expensive, because Jalen Ramsey's 24. Darius Slay's 28, uh, but uh, it, it's going to be at least a first. There's no way a first-round pick is not included in this. I, if I had asked, say, it's probably, if, if they like a Darby, you know, if, if Matt Patricia sees someone like Darby, Ronald Darby, and thinks that, you know, he can get the job done on the outside, maybe we can get out with, like, a second-round pick in Darby if they really want to move him. But I think it's, you know, it's going to be a first-round pick, maybe a third, a first and a third, a first and a fourth, a first and Darby, somewhere in that territory. But if they got this done... I mean, the fact that two of my top three corners have been available in these past three weeks is ridiculous to say the least. Philly was, you know, it's a report they were, you know, it's almost a fact that they were in for a first and a second round pick on Jalen Ramsey. If they're willing to pay that, I mean, I don't, I don't think Darius Slay is worth a first and a second, uh, given the fact that he's disgruntled with Detroit. Necessarily, Detroit has a headache on their hands, so you don't have to, I don't think you have to overpay to get Darius Slay because Detroit's kind of getting backed into a wall for a guy that doesn't, apparently doesn't want to be there right now. So, you know, first and a third, like I said, first and a third, first and Darby, if, if Patricia thinks Darby can come in and play in his scheme, which maybe, I mean, maybe Darby's, when Darby's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's bad. He's inconsistent. That's why he's not a top tier corner, but he can play some really good football. Um, but that's, that's a big rumor right now. Hopefully I would love to come up back here tomorrow and, and talk to you guys about welcoming Darius Slay to the Philadelphia Eagles, welcoming Robbie Anderson to the Philadelphia Eagles. If we get both those guys I'm, I'm, if we get both those guys, I don't know. I'll have to do something. I'll do something. I don't know. I'll dye my hair green. Like I'll be the, the Canadian ninja of Madden world. I, I don't know. I probably won't. That's stupid. But uh, what we can talk about here, because we got to put the burner, the kibosh on Darius Slay and Robbie Anderson or Chris Harris, like all that stuff's just rumors at this point. We actually did make a trade. We traded a conditional pick, which in my opinion is probably going to be sixth rounder, uh, fifth rounder at worst, because that's what he was in 2018, to the Cleveland Browns for Gennard Avery. I love this pick. For the Philadelphia Eagles, Browns fans are very upset that they pretty much just gave away one of their best young playmakers. He just couldn't see the field. Not a scheme fit was the report out of out of uh, Cleveland. Uh, but it seemed like every time this year he was in there making a play, uh, you know, put pressure Tom Brady a couple times in that game. I know Brown fans are generally upset. Anytime the fans are generally upset, you know you did a, a good piece of business. You look at Avery last year, uh, you, like I said, you could probably argue he was the third best rookie. 
after Ward and uh, and obviously Baker Mayfield. Four and a half sacks. He had uh, four pass deflections, a forced fumble, 14 QB hits, five TFLs. He was drafted as an inside linebacker out of Memphis. As a, I think he was my fifth linebacker in my 2018 uh, positional rankings. He had 80 tackles, 22 TFLs, eight and a half sacks as a as a, as a linebacker in 2017. 2016 showed a little bit more versatility, uh, being able to drop back into coverage, had two interceptions, a couple more pass deflections. So, you know, his scouting report coming out of Memphis was he's your old school inside linebacker. Very good, very tough, big hitter. But I don't know, like coverage is not his strength. He's not a liability, but it's not his strength. You type in Gennard Avery highlights, the first highlight, whatever, just terrible music. But you can see a mix of his game. Effect in the pass, playing DN, playing outside linebacker, but also being able to drop back into coverage. When you're going up against a tight end, it's not a premier catching tight end. You know, he can do a job. He can, he can do bump and run. He can keep the guy in front of him, which is nice. That's versatility. And in my opinion, for how this trade affects the Eagles, I think because of that, he's going to be more so a linebacker than he is a defensive end. Now, he's classified as a defensive end on Eagles Twitter when they announced this trade. A little bit, con- I'm not going to say concerned, but confused. Because for our scheme, we don't need a D-end. We do not. Brandon Graham, over the last three weeks, has been as good as anyone on the team. Uh, you know, him and Fletcher Cox really heating up. Brandon Graham, BG's playing well. Derek Barnett, a couple dumb penalties, but generally speaking, Derek Barnett has been playing well. Josh Sweat, as a rotational guy, has been coming in, making some plays, getting pressures. I think he got a sack uh, a week ago. He's looked fine. Uh, Deshaun Hall, our preseason all-star. Obviously, again, when he's in the game, it seems like he's getting pressures. Might not be getting the box score stats, but he seems fine. Vinny Curry, you know what he is. He's a run stuffer. Doesn't seem like an issue right now. So you throw another guy in the mix, that's kind of putting Gennard Avery in the same scenario that he was with Cleveland, where he just can't get the field. There's just too many other guys that are a priority, a favorite, not necessarily more talented, but he's just kind of out of favor in the scheme. But if we view him as an outside linebacker, as a rush linebacker, he brings a skill set that we don't have on the Philadelphia Eagles right now. We do not have a guy from that linebacking core that we can bring on blitzes. Michael Kendricks didn't get home a whole lot, but Michael Kendricks, generally speaking, was our blitzing linebacker in our scheme before we let him walk. You know, for the, for the first little bit, he was getting four or five sacks a year. We do not have a linebacker of the team that will even sniff four or five sacks right now on the Philadelphia Eagles. He was always our blitz linebacker, and while Michael Kendricks' strength was his athletic ability, his sideline to sideline early in his career before he started getting injuries, he could actually cover tight ends very, very well. But generally speaking, he would be the linebacker. When we wanted to up the blitz, we would send him, and he would apply pressure, if not get a sack outright. Right now, you look at the Philadelphia linebackers. We have Bradham, who's banged up, but when Bradham's in there, he's not He's not a blitzer. He's not really. He's a good hitter. He's sideline to sideline. He's not a blitzer. Nate Gary, who gets a lot of snaps, seems to be the next Jalen Mills, for whatever reason, just a, a boy toy of Jim Swartz. And Nate Gary's had some good, good moments, some good snaps, but generally speaking... Shouldn't be starting. He should be a solid depth guy. If you're in a pinch, you can put him in. But he's definitely not. He's a converted safety. He's not a rusher. You got Camus Grugier Hill, more of a safety, generally speaking. He's like 225 pounds, cover linebacker, sideline to sideline. You have TJ Edwards, who actually I think had a really solid game against the uh, the Buffalo Bills. He's, you know, again, he's not a rush linebacker. He's a sideline. So right now we have no diversity to our linebacking core. We can send no one on a blitz. We have no one that can effectively blitz from the linebacking core. So we do run a lot of nickel. A lot of, you know, you have two linebackers on the field. Generally speaking, Avery's not going to be put out in those situations. I, I don't think. You're probably still going to run with Bradham and Camus or Bradham and Gary, Bradham and Edwards, whoever. Jim Schwartz is feeling for that flavor of the week. But now when we have three linebackers, you could throw in Gennard Avery and effectively rush the passer. That's something that our defense does not have. And something that Jim Schwartz more and more the last couple weeks has been blitzing. A whole lot. We've lived and died by the blitz. And an issue is because you, anytime you see Nate Gary try to come in with a blitz, he has been garbage. Absolute garbage. Like, just pathetic. Like he gets eaten alive by even tight ends and, full, and running backs. So a guy like Avery, who's a proven pass rusher, especially last year with the Cleveland Browns, that is a big-time asset, a big-time get for the Philadelphia Eagles defense. I love this move. I can't grade it until I see what the conditional pick was. I'm going to say... I'm gonna say Oh, it's a conditional pick, so it's probably on the condition of sack, snap, something in that territory. But I'm going to guess, at worst, it's a fifth-round pick, and a fifth-round pick for a sure thing in Gennard Avery, not whiffing on another linebacker, Nate Garrett. Not, you, know, you know, if it is an edge rusher, though, I made a note in my tweet, did they, are they giving up on Sharif Miller already, the fourth-round pick at a Penn State, which I thought was a very confusing... I mean, I, I can't write him off. He, we only saw him in a preseason. I think the last he had like a sack in the preseason. It's still way too early, but I was incredibly disappointed and upset with that pick. I felt like it was not the right position to address, especially when we had linebackers like Mac Wilson, who's now a starter for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Blake Cashman, who's a starter for the Jets at linebacker. 
getting a defensive end again. Like it was a, I didn't really like that pick. So someone like Avery though, I, I think, you know, a lot of Eagle fans are going to be like, this is not Robbie Anderson, Chris Harris, Darius Slay. But I think this is a good piece of business for this Philadelphia Eagles team that definitely needs to apply more pressure on the quarterback. You're going to get that in Gennard Avery. We need more tough guys on the defense, more olds. This guy here loves to hit. We are not a big hitting team. Debatably, Razul Douglas is like our biggest hitter on the defense. Bradham, Douglas, uh, Rodney, uh, Rodney McLeod, those are our big hitters. And like they're not really big hitters. Avery is a big time hitter. He's a guy that likes to lay the lumber. He's, got, he's, a, he's a tone setter. I think that's another thing that this defense has kind of been lacking. So I think generally speaking, this is a very positive move from the Philadelphia Eagles. And the key word about this whole thing is that this is the beginning. Hopefully this is the beginning. I'm not going to get my hopes up for Darius Slay or Buster and things like that, because, you know, I think it's going to take a lot to move him. But, you know, looking more towards maybe Chris Harris, because it seems like there's a lot of dismay right now in Denver, especially with Flacco calling out his team and stuff like that. Or or Robbie Anderson. I put my money on Robbie Anderson right now being uh, a guy that we do land. Uh, but it's going to be very interesting to say at least here for the Philadelphia Eagles. So I just wanted to make a note, obviously you address the Darius Slay stuff, because that's huge rumors for the Philadelphia Eagles. But uh, I, I just feel like enough people are going to kind of throw the Avery signing. Just, you know, he's a depth guy for Cleveland, couldn't get in the field, whatever. Very similar to what happened when we got Bradham from the Buffalo Bills. And I knew Bradham would succeed in our scheme with Jim Schwartz calling the plays. And what happened? Even though Bradham hasn't played to the same level after he got that big contract in the Super Bowl, he played very well to get that big contract. And, I, and a, lot, a lot of people talked about that. And I was like, Bradham's going to be a great pick for this defense. I'm getting very similar vibes here for Avery. So I think you guys should be excited about this move. And again, hopefully it's just the beginning. So thank you guys for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button. Until next time, it's C4. Same peace out.